podcast called Mystic Takeaway. Um, if you want to tell me quickly about what that, like maybe what's the, like why, what's your why for doing that? Well, I'm really very interested in esoteric philosophy. And actually, I really love stories about the transcendent and the everyday world colliding and the surprise mm. and joy and wonder that ensues when that happens. And uh, so I showcase extraordinary stories of mysterious encounters, miraculous healings, and things like that. So mm. I love interviewing people from all over uh, the world. And I'm having a lot of fun with my podcast. I think that clearly shows. We were talking before we started. You mentioned you have, and you said only 12. I think 12 is awesome. A lot of Thank people don't you. make it past seven. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank but you. as you said, you're fairly new to this. And in this particular podcast, um, if people want to know more about you or they want to know more about your show or things we talk about, they can just go to forum.podcaster.community and we'll put this will be up there with a player. Um, and what I thought we would talk about today is statistics and what does it mean in listener counts. And these are things that come up a lot with people who start podcasting. They quickly realize there's a whole bunch of numbers that you can see, but what do those numbers mean? What numbers should you be shooting for? So in these podcast episodes here, I'm trying to pick one topic and then we kind of talk about that one thing and we can always come back another day for something else. Yep. Um, so where do we want to start with statistics? Do you want to maybe give me your, when was the first moment you realized that downloads were something that you could actually keep track of or what surprised you first about stats? Well, you know, I, I obviously when you open a simple cast account, they have this little section called analytics and then they mm -hmm. tell you, wow, all these countries that are listening potentially, <laughs> they trying to keep it out of my sight for like a week Don't at a time, yes. you know, but um, because obviously you don't want to be making a podcast thinking that that's all that matters is whether, you know, I mean, I'm just grateful that I have more than one person listening. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it is kind of fun to think mm. that you've made something that's actually getting heard in South Africa or places yes. where you have never been. So that's mm. kind of fun. Yeah. yeah, there's a big, the the technology behind what does stats mean? There is a, I don't even know what it means. It's IAB, like International Association of Broadcasters or something. There's an IAB that got together and started really specifically deciding, like a listen is defined as they get more than two minutes and, and like, it's a rabbit hole of details, which I haven't even looked at. Um, so that stuff's all out there. And that matters if your show, if you're going to try and sell um, right. advertising, then, you know, we need to have apples to compare to apples. So I, I get all that, but I'm with you. I don't want to, I don't want to overthink it. Um, so a couple of things that spring to mind is I did an experiment. It started as a, I wonder what would happen if, and it started, I started it in March of 2020. Um, I didn't start it because of the pandemic, but it was just like, oh, while I'm holed up in my house, I might as well. So I started a podcast, which is quotes. And I have a ridiculous collection of quotes. It's a problem. <laughs> but I'm like, I have all these quotes. So I started just recording one. They're like 60, 70 second long. Sometimes they're 10 seconds long. And it's just me saying, hello, I'm Craig. This is blah, blah, blah. And I just read the quote. And then if I know who it's the attribution, I, I say that. And that's the end of the show. And I, I batch them. I do them in, in bunches. And my test was, what would happen if I put up a podcast at the exact same time of day every single day for 365 days and did absolutely nothing else? Just put it out there. So I submitted it. it was in, it's in Spotify. It's coming up on 16,000 downloads. Bearing, like I get spikes where there'll be four, 500 downloads in a day No kidding. on this thing now. And I'm like, huh? I mean, like somebody will download every one of the episodes. Um, so the one thing that I noticed was like, yeah, we all as podcasters, we know who the big players are in publishing, but there are still surprises. So I think you might want to, might want to think or look more carefully at which platforms you, you know, you're uh, sorry, I should say one, you know, those of you who are listening, one might want to pay closer attention to the platform spread. Like is your podcast typical? Yeah. Apple's got two thirds and then it's Spotify. Um, cause I got mine, I was really surprised by what happened. Um, so I think your comment about what countries are people downloading in and what time of day are they listening in the morning or the evening though, and on what platform that may be more interesting than how many people do I think are listening because it actually tells me more about who might be listening. And, um, so that's just an insight that I had about one experiment that I've tried. That's really cool. I mean, you know, 
I think it's, as I said, I think it's really good not to actually think too much about it because obviously, you know, my motivation for making the podcast, there's so many reasons why I'm doing it that are not about how many people are going to listen to it. But at the same time, of course, it's kind of fun to think. And I do get people that I know. I mean, I think most of the people that are listening are probably people that I know that are part of the network that I'm part of, which is, uh, has to do with meditation. And so um, I do get people now and then pinging me and t- telling me, mm. um, oh, I love, I love all your episodes. I've been listening since oh, the beginning. Nice. Things like that. So I, I'm getting feedback from people mostly that I know. But recently I tried a little experiment where um, my daughter was my guest and she has a lot of friends. And I, I put up a post on Facebook with her photograph because I think Facebook actually slows down the algorithm if they think you're selling something but you're not paying for it or something because I put these up before and I didn't get anywhere. And so this time I just put a photograph of her and just the link to the, to her episode. And I have had so much volume since then. And I tagged her, of course, so all her friends are listening. I was just curious Mm. to see what would happen, you know? So I suddenly had like, you know, a hundred downloads in a week, which is kind of rare for me. I mean, normally. Well, right. I mean, that's that's awesome. But when you know, like, oh, I know what usually happens when I drop an episode, and you do, you try one thing, and something else happens, and it makes it really clear, like, well, it's probably there's there's a correlation. It's probably from that. Um, I think what what also works is when your guests share it. But I've found uh, after hundreds, I've found that it's really hard to get a guest to share your show. I mean, I've if they're that too. If they're doing the, they call it the press junket. Like if they publish the book, oh yeah, and of yeah. course they share, they share everything. But right. generally, and and I I kind of understand why. I mean, it's it's a bit of a, you know, they're putting their name in behind your work, and um, I also think they're a little. Um, if if I do a like an hour and a half recording with you, and then I say here, share this to Elisa. The first thing you think is, well, I, I got to listen to all of it to make sure I don't sound like an idiot, right? So you, now you got to find an hour and a half, and maybe you don't normally listen to my show and you enjoyed the conversation, but you don't want to hear it again. I, I have imposter syndrome when I hear myself. So it's like a big ask just for that personal hill for the guest to get over that. Yeah. Um, it's totally true. Actually, one of my guests, he said some things in our episode that I didn't know were uncomfortable for him. And then mm. he didn't want to share it, but he finally came around after it was published to tell me, oh, I really wish I hadn't said that because if it gets around to one of my friends, they're going to be upset. So it was, you know, it was a pretty important story. It was actually, but it wasn't that hard for me to take those details out. So I, once I knew, I said, I'll just go back and I'll scrub them and I'll just put it back up again. Yeah. Replace the audio file. Yeah. And so and he, he was so grateful. And after that, you know, I, I got a lot more listens on that particular one. So mm. I think he did pass it around after that. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's hard. It's right. He didn't want to listen to it. He, I don't think he wanted to listen to it. He had regrets about what he'd said. And then it, it literally was a period of a month or something. Mm. You know, So it took some time before we, we ironed that out that he finally told me and then I was able to fix it. And then it took him a long time to listen to that. <laughs> so yeah. you know, it's a process. I, I do occasionally, um, I personally think that all right, you're always going to have followers who subscribe to your show and listen to everything that you do. Like you're always going to have fans. Um, but setting aside those people who are the diehards, they, they listen to everything. I could hide the podcast under a rock. They would find it. Setting aside those people. I think most people who listen to podcasts are listening to one episode. I have episodes that are they're like five years old and people are still downloading. I'm like, uh, uh, like 15 downloads of episode 12. I'm like, huh? I can't even remember. I'm like, I have to go look. Oh, who was that? And I think what's happening is as you do more and more episodes and build that body of work, then those pieces in the back catalog, unless you're doing a, a show that is very time, you know, like the daily news. Um, but like the stories that you're sharing, those sit there and they don't, they don't have a half-life. They don't deteriorate. People are going to find the topic that you talked about, or they're going to find that particular person. And they'll listen to that two years from now or three years from now. And I, I really think that that's where um, the experimental podcast I mentioned, the downloads are spread all over. It's not like I, I get seven or eight downloads in the first 24 hours on that podcast. It's tiny. But when I look at the most common episode, I was like, why does this episode have 400 downloads? And it's, it's just people are listening to that one, which ironically is a quote from my mother. Oh, my God. That's great. 
<laughs> which I, I didn't attribute to her because she must have got it from somewhere. But the quote is, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. <laughs> That's, oh, that's number one really download episode. funny. That's <laughs> yes. really funny. And I think people are sharing it. So I think, you know, you and I have hit on this thing of like, yeah, you have to do the work yourself. You have to, you know, share your own things in a way that you think is appropriate and meaningful for what you're sharing. Don't rely on your guests. Don't expect that just because you landed a really popular guest, you can sit on their coattails. Um, and, and don't underestimate how valuable the work is, even when it's sitting out there for years, I, that continues to surprise me. That's so fascinating. Actually, um, I, I'm meeting people now that, um, I ran into somebody in the grocery store who said, you know, when I told her that I am doing a podcast, she looked it up and she's been listening to every single episode now. Mm. So it's like, it is happening that people hear one, they like it, and then they go back and listen to the older ones. So my mm -hmm. first episode has about 170 downloads on it which makes me really happy, you know, to know that people are listening to the first one because it's where yeah. I describe what I, what I, why I was inspired to do the podcast. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's amazing really the whole idea, this medium of finding your voice and then share, putting something that you really care about out there in the world and having it have its own life, you know, actually mm -hmm. it's, it's having its impact just as you said, it has no half-life. It could go on for, for a long time. It's very, very cool, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. I keep thinking, to mind. I keep thinking that maybe you have some ideas um, because you've been doing this now for so long about the best no, I way. Have no clue. The best way to kind of like, because I mean, you know, people set up an Instagram account and then they, they broadcast it there and then also on Twitter and all these various places. I have no idea what to do with the marketing uh, stuff. my my opinion is and i i have i have done some experiments to, to try and back this up to see whether i'm right but my opinion is it's really really difficult to get someone to change mediums so if they are in their podcast player app they are not like in terms of how they are thinking they are not on facebook they are not in the mode of uh, mowing the lawn or whatever, like they listen in a certain space, okay. right? a comfy chair and a cup of tea. And that's not the space that they want to surf social networks. So it's not. And so anytime you ask or expect someone to shift. So for example, um, if you put, um, what do they call it? When you make an audiogram, make an audiogram, you know, fake visual to go with your audio and stick that up on Instagram. Um, those, those kind of work for us. If we put up an audiogram, we were doing it on an intentional lag, like wait, two episodes put like the third one back in an audiogram and yeah it would generate an extra 40 downloads and you can see it, it like there's a bump and you're like okay clearly some people because there's you can't even link right and on in instagram some people will shift but compared to the i think i have like 600 followers on instagram you know okay is that five seven percent but it's really not like they all they all love movers mindset but they press the like button when I post images, but they don't all jump on that other episode. So I really think it's, if you're going to, let's say you're going to go into Facebook or, or Instagram, if you're going to do that, you need to have a specific reason why you're doing that. Don't do it just because you think, well, if I also put my content there, it will draw additional you know, ears to my podcast. It, it will draw some, but there's a lot of work you got to put into Instagram or if you're going to Twitter or Medium or wherever you want to go. So that's, that's the only thing that I had, my opinion is yeah, it's really hard to get people to cross from one, you know, take this survey. Almost nobody does, you know, or support us on Patreon. Like almost nobody does. They have to really be motivated. Um, so for me, it's just a, when people ask me questions like that, I'm like, okay, only take on the things that you have the energy to do and that you're going to do well and that, that you're going to get some personal, like, I really love Instagram. So I really want to be on there. Um, Cause otherwise you're just adding another you know, crank that you got to turn on a regular basis. And podcasting is, we all know, those of us who podcast is already, it's a grind. I mean, no matter how much you love your show and love your guests and love your stories, there's only like 40 minutes between record and stop. And there's hours and hours and hours on either side. So totally it's true. Road. It's totally true. What do you think about the ratings thing on, on Apple? Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, I, you know, the only thoughts I have on that I, I've gotten from other people. Um, I highly recommend anybody read um, Pod News, P O D N E W S, podnews.net, I believe it is. It's James Cridlin's uh, website, newsletter, email. So anything I know about ratings comes from reading articles that he writes or that he refers to. And 
I, I think the issue I have with with ratings of any kind is there's always going to be a motive for whoever did the ratings. So, you know, Nielsen back in TV, they had a reason that they were doing it. And Apple, you know, they're they're not serving the show. Like in other words, their their product, those ratings are designed to get more people to go, I love podcasts, you know, because they opened the app and the thing that it recommended was awesome for them. That has nothing to do with you know, making Craig or Lisa, you know, money or enjoyment or any. It's, so I, I always try to zoom out when I see ratings like number one show. And then I'm like, yeah, who rated that? Why are they keeping, you know, America's top 40 music countable? Like what, what is this? What is it for? And when I do that, it's never for me. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I, you know, I don't, I'm not gonna, if I've, I've never appeared on any rating anywhere. Um, yeah. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, if I was on the top of that, I'm not sure what would happen. My server would probably fall over. You know, I don't, it's not what I, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, first world problem, but a whole different issue. So I, I really think for me, you know, um, the kind of the, the symbiotic other side to the question you asked me is, well, okay, Craig, what does, you know, what are you interested in if it's not ratings and downloads? And when, it's when people come up to me and talk to me about the show. Um, I have had a handful, like maybe five at most, um, situations where I, I tend to go to these big events where people get together and train physically and I'll be in a group of like 500 people and somebody will randomly walk up to me and say, I love that episode with, I love when they tell me which person they liked. Cause then I go, you know, they're here. They're like right over you. <laughs> oh, Cause that's, that's what I, I love cool. seeing. I yeah. love seeing people. Like if I catch people talking about the show, Oh, that's Nirvana. I don't go over. I'm just like, that's so awesome. You know, that's I let him, I, you know, I love that. And somebody walk up to me at like a, a friend's giving, you know, where you have a Thanksgiving thing, not on Thanksgiving and invite all your friends we'll do a friend's giving. And I was just standing around and somebody walked in the door and I just happened to say, hello, you know, and he went, Oh, like actually recognized the way I say hello. And it was, I was like, that's awesome. Oh my God. Like that's how intimate the medium is. So that to me is, I love the one-on-one -on -one when I bump into people or when I see them doing what I hope they do, which is, learn more about the guests, feel more comfortable talking to the guests, go talk to the guests. So. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I, I totally agree. In my case, it's the same. It's like I get these personal notes from people telling me how much they enjoyed the hmm. episode and or they loved hearing this story or that story. And it's, it's so um, gratifying. It's just nothing better. <laughs> Terrific. I use that word a lot. Um, but it was terrific. I really enjoyed talking to you, Elisa. And as I said, before we started recording, we can totally do more of these. Um, but I think that's a great place to wrap up. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. All right. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Bye.